he'll certainly end up crucified. They decided it even before they'd arrested him. I don't understand why the high priest is in such a hurry. I've never seen a trial at dawn, the day before Passover. Who are you? Samuel of Hebron and Jonathan of Berzur. Doctors of law and members of the Sanhedrin. You're awaited. Enter. Bring in the witnesses. He has healed many of the poor. He is a man of God. Then he's a dangerous man. <coughs> the witnesses up to now have accused a prisoner of eating with sinners, with public sinners. But that's not all. Listen to what Matthew the Pharisee has to say. Do you know this man? Yes. He is Jesus of Nazareth. What do you accuse him of? He has corrupted my brother's mind. Tell us of his crime. Tell us. My brother, an inexperienced youth, went to him one day, this rabbi, to ask how he could obtain eternal life. And you know what he answered him? Abandon your father and your mother. Give all your belongings to the poor. Have you heard? He said, abandon your father and your mother. It is written, honor your father and mother. <laughs> we certainly cannot sentence him. In order to follow this false prophet, many have been talked into leaving their homes, their jobs, to live like vagabonds, to follow him wherever he goes. Have you anything else to add? Well, this man told my brother to sell everything, the sheep, the servants, all our power. And what was he to do with the money? Answer! What was he to do with the money he got from the sales? He said to give it to the poor, to his friends. This Nazarene has come to Jerusalem only to bring disorder. And you, Nazarene, what have you got to say? How do you justify yourself? I've always talked to everybody openly, in the synagogues and in the temple. Why do you question me? Question those who have heard what I have <laughs> said. If I have spoken unjustly, Tell me where am I unjust? But if I have spoken justly, then why do you strike me? The outcome of this trial has already been decided long before it started. I know, Joseph. Everybody knows. The Sanhedrin fears him. Fears that he'll turn the people against them. Evidence is clear up to this point. It's not enough to sentence a just man. It's not enough. They have seen him disrespect the Holy Sabbath and defend an adulterer. He lets the masses acclaim him like a king. He speaks of a new kingdom and he announces a new law. But we already have a law. And it is the law of Moses. Are there other witnesses? Here are other witnesses. These sons of Israel have heard the accused say terrible things against the temple. They say he is a blasphemer.
Can we trust these witnesses? We have looked for witnesses against him for days, but we haven't found any. But the testimonies of these two agree. They certainly agree. So you have heard the accused speak about the temple. What did he say? I heard him with my own ears. May lightning strike me if I lie. He said, I can destroy God's temple and rebuild it in three days. He said it. I was there. <laughs> Yes, he said, I'll destroy this temple. He said, this temple was built by the hands of man, and I will build another, not made by the hands of man. Nazarene, have you nothing to say about what the witnesses accuse you of? Answer, or else! I ask you for the sake of the living God to say if you are the Messiah. That is what I want to know. Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Holy, the Son of God? You have said it, that I am. I am. If I tell you, you won't believe me. If I ask you now about this, you won't answer me. But I tell you now, from this moment on, the Son of Man will sit to the right of God's power. Then you admit it. You say you are the Son of God? You say it. You yourself have said it. I am. <laughs> What need do we have of witnesses? You are all witnesses. We have all heard the blasphemy. What else do we need to sentence him? <sighs> what then is your sentence? <laughs> he deserves to die. Send him to Pilate. Do you want some, too? Thank you. Where's the man I was with? Which man? Jesus' disciple? He was here a moment ago. What's so special about this Nazarene to keep us all awake, masters and servants? That man is a prophet, a just man, a man whom they fear. Mark, what are you doing here at this hour? They've arrested the rabbi. They've arrested the rabbi. I know, Mark. Let's go. I'll take you home. We're all in danger. They'll come looking for us. I denied him. Understand? I was afraid. What were you going to do? Get arrested also? I haven't given up hope. We have some friends, people who respect us amongst the members of the Sanhedrin. And there is a law to obey. They can't sentence an innocent man. I denied him. I can't believe I denied him. <laughs> Yes, they're all against him. He's like a lamb being led to slaughter. You saw him when he was brought before Caiaphas? <laughs> Come in. What is happening? Caiaphas asked to be received immediately for a legal matter. This early? And the whole Sanhedrin is with him. 
Roman governor salutes the noble supreme priest Caiaphas and the honorable Sanhedrin. Come in. We shall hear you. Noble governor, you know our tradition. It is the eve of Passover, and we are not allowed to enter the house of a Gentile. Then, noble Caiaphas, why have you brought this man here in chains? The Sanhedrin have judged him. This man is sentenced to death. As you know, we are not permitted to carry out our death penalties. It is a task that you Romans have assigned to yourselves. We have verified that this man incites our people. He prohibits them from paying the tributes to Caesar and claims to be the Messiah King. If this is what you've come for, then I will examine him. We will await your judgment, noble governor. So, you are the king of the Jews. You have said it. This is why they demand that you be sentenced to death. If my reign belonged to this world, my guards would have fought to defend me. But my reign is not of this world. He has no guards, no soldiers, no spies. He is a prophet who explains their scriptures to the people. The Sanhedrin fear he may incite the people against them. Then you admit it. You are a king. What of a kingdom that is not of this world? You have said it. This is why I was born, and this is why I came into the world. Whoever is on the truth side listens to my voice. The truth, the truth. What is the truth? Noble Caiaphas, I find the prisoner has committed no crime. Is this the sign of friendship and protection that Rome promised us? How can you declare he is not guilty? That man has disturbed the people with his speeches for years. From Galilee to Judea, he claims to be king. Is the man a Galilean? Yes, he's from Nazareth. Then Herod is his king. Well. Yes, still, it is here in Jerusalem that people claim him to be a king. Then take him to Herod. He will judge him. As it happens, he is here in Jerusalem. Have him escorted to Herod. But why all this useless resistance? Is he a friend of the Romans? Your cooperation was useful. You kept your promise. We captured him without clamor and without riots, as we wished. Yes, you've captured him. I let you capture him, and I betrayed him for your sake. I've betrayed my master. I've sold the blood of an innocent. You have been well paid for this. What do you complain about now? <gasps> your 30 denarii? Take them! Oh. No. We will use that money to buy a field. The potter's field, so we will have a place to bury foreigners. That money is stained with blood. We can't put it back in the temple's treasury. I've been wanting to meet you for years. You were a friend of John, right? Poor man. I spoke to him once, but then he lost his head. People go around saying, you are a prophet. 
You have accomplished great works. I don't like this wine. Do me a personal favor. Uh, they say you are a master at these things. Uh, turn the water in this pitcher into wine. Yeah, It's still water. He doesn't love me. He wants me to die of thirst. Herod, what do you want? This man claims to be a king. He's a troublemaker. According to the Sanhedrin, he should be sentenced to death. But since he is your subject, we have brought him here. It is Pilate who sends him to you. No, this man is just a fraud. What have you done to him? He is not well. All in all, he's my subject. My subjects must be respected. <laughs> Let's remedy the harm done. I have magnificent clothing for him. Let us commit this man to the mercy of the Roman governor. His wisdom and his respect for the law give us complete confidence. I have no reason to sentence him. He is just a poor lunatic. <laughs> Yes, I know him. He's Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples of the Nazarene. They say he was the one who betrayed him. What a way to die. You have brought me this man because you said he troubled the people. I have questioned him, but I haven't found him guilty of what you accuse him of. And even Herod said that he finds him not guilty, and sent him back to me. And here is my decision. This man has done nothing to deserve death. He will certainly be punished, but then I will let him go free. No. 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 It was not for this that we have brought this Nazarene to you. It was not for this we have judged his crimes, and we have already sentenced him. Their hearts have grown bitter. The people of Jerusalem love Jesus. All the people that have met him from Galilee to Judea, they all love Jesus. They all blessed him. They envy him. The people love and follow Jesus. They, on the other hand, are not loved and are not followed. This is Barabbas. Barabbas took part in a revolt and killed a man. You know this Barabbas. On the occasion of the Passover holiday, it is the custom of the Roman judiciary to free one prisoner. You know that. I put it to your sense of justice. Whom do you want me to free this Passover? Barabbas or Jesus, known as the Messiah? Barabbas! 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 He knows that they have brought Jesus to him for hate and he doesn't want to disappoint them. He should be ashamed. Ashamed! What then should I do with Jesus, known as the Messiah? Crucify him! But what harm has he done to you? I am not responsible for the blood of this man. I wash my hands of it. Not responsible. I am not responsible. Oh. 
After Jesus' arrest, his trial went on the entire night between the Thursday and the Friday before the Hebrew Passover was to be celebrated on the following Saturday. The ruling body for governing the Hebrew people and dispensing justice was the Sanhedrin, and the Sanhedrin sentenced Jesus to death. But ever since the beginning of Roman dominion over Palestine, although the Sanhedrin could pronounce the death sentence, it could not actually carry it out. The right was invested in the authority of the Roman procurator, who could in fact turn down the request for a death sentence. That is why the death sentence pronounced against Jesus by the Sanhedrin had to be examined, according to Roman law, by Pontius Pilate, the current procurator. Pontius Pilate studied the case, but could not find any crime on Jesus' part that justified the death sentence. Among the charges made by the Sanhedrin against Jesus was that of having conspired against the political power of Rome in that he had called himself king. Jesus, however, had explained that his kingdom was not of this world, and it was quite clear what he meant, but those who accused him preferred not to understand. Pilate realized that Jesus had been handed over to him out of envy at the success his preaching enjoyed with the common people. And so, convinced of Jesus' innocence and not wishing to get involved in what he regarded as unimportant Hebrew squabbles, he tried to pass on the responsibility for a decision to somebody else. That somebody else was Herod Antipas, tetrarch or ruler of Galilee. Jesus being a native of Galilee, the Palestinian region north of Jerusalem, was in fact subject to the civil jurisdiction of Herod Antipas, who happened to be residing in his Jerusalem palace at that time. So Pilate sent Jesus to him. But Herod Antipas too could not find Jesus guilty of a capital crime, and after mocking him, sent him back to Pilate. The Roman procurator felt he could not decide regarding a sentence he considered unjust, but at the same time he did not want to offend the Sanhedrin. The absurd compromise he arrived at was based on the tradition, on the occasion of a local festivity, of granting one prisoner his freedom. Pilate asked the crowd, Which do you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Christ? And persuaded by the priests and the members of the Sanhedrin, the crowd replied, Barabbas! They shouted for Jesus to be crucified, and their wish was granted. And so it was that Jesus, the Galilean of Nazareth, was crucified after the most unjust of trials.